Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. To the Valdosta Lowndes County branch, mm -hmm. your president who has served very ably this evening to moderate this program, to her cabinet, to former presidents that are in the room tonight, to the members of this branch, to the elected officials. Mr. May, I'm very grateful for this token of hospitality to the appointed officials in the room, members of the armed services, to the reverend's clergy, to the friends of the NAACP, and to the enemies as well, to the special guests. I greet you tonight on behalf of our president and CEO, Lorraine C. Miller, and on behalf of the chairman of our board of directors, the Reverend Robert Rosalind McAllister Brock, I bring you greetings from the 117 units, from Rome to Brunswick, from Athens to Albany, Macon, Columbus, Savannah, and all points in between, which are the Georgia NAACP, and the more than 1,700 units around the globe, which are the National Association for the advancement of colored people. I greet you tonight in the spirit of Moses and Harriet and Sir John. I greet you tonight in the spirit of Martin and Medgar and Malcolm. I greet you tonight in the spirit of our ancestors whose bodies carpet the Atlantic from the coasts of Mother Africa to the shores of North America. I greet you on behalf of all of those who Reverend Lucas were stacked on those slave ships like sardines in cans, hardly any food to eat, no water to drink, who were diseased, who were disheartened, who were beaten and who were battered, but who were not I greet you tonight on behalf of those who worked in cotton fields around Valdosta. All right, all right. Stopped in Richmond Hill on the way and then came down 95 and across the Highway 99 and just looked at all of those fields. I, I greet you on behalf of all of those who worked from sun up to sundown. Yeah. I thought I was in a church tonight. All right. Jim Crow laws and separate but unequal and poll taxes and literacy tests and wow. crosses burning in their yards and strange fruit hanging on their trees. Vodka is in the national attention wow. of the whole world because there's still strange fruit yes. hanging on the trees. Yes. Yes. Bodies floating wow. down rivers. Wow. Wow. Those who endured all just for us to be here tonight. We have come over a ways that with tears have been walked. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. And this has not, I shared this with Reverend in the back, this has not been glamorous work, but it has been necessary work for the uplift of our people. So I greet you tonight on behalf of all of those whose names will never be uttered aloud in a gathering like this. People like my grandmother, Mrs. Louise Riley Taylor, who during the course of her life never had the courtesy of the hospitality of those she cooked for and washed for and those she even lifted to her breast and let them drink her nourishment. They could draw strength from her, but could never find the strength to call her by her proper name. Though she never went to a college, never graduated from a high school, she had enough inspiration about what America 
should be. She would send me through three universities. So I understand uh, that you might call me doctor tonight, and that is appropriate. I come from uh, people who straight pennies and buttons together. Dealt in palm industry, sent potato pies and snacks on food to the university. So I, I clearly understand to whom I am grateful. I call their names out tonight. Those for whom this struggle is more than just purely a rhetorical engagement. I honor the presence of the family of Kendrick Johnson. I'm very proud to see there with them our host of students from Valdosta State University. I'm grateful for your presence. We pray that our coming tonight will engage more uh, to continue to do the work for which you have dedicated this portion of your life. Almost 106 years, the NAACP has been built on the collective courage of thousands of Americans. People of all races, people of all nationalities, people of all faith and no faith who are united on one premise. That premise that Thomas Jefferson stumbled upon, Brother Lockett, when he wrote in our Declaration of Independence that there are certain inalienable rights. Yes, yes. These are rights that cannot be bought or cannot be bartered, cannot be compromised. They do not come from a pronouncement by the President of the United States. They don't need uh, approval by even a U.S. Attorney. Yes. Uh, the municipalities of this state are defenseless against them. They are great and mighty, and of these, chief of which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yes. Can't help but to feel that in Valdosta, yes. a town that's not different from the town that I live in, Statesboro, a college town, a town for whom I know shares the same values that the citizens of Statesboro share. They all, we all want a community that is safe, that is vibrant, yeah. that is a good place to live, work, and play, mm -hmm. where our children get a world-class education yeah. and are prepared for global opportunities that they will meet, where our criminal justice system is fair and impartial. Yeah. Those who stand before its bar stand on equal ground. We all want a community that is built in such a way that it promotes healthy and whole lifestyles. We want uh, an environment that is clean, that the air that we breathe doesn't poison us, and the water we drink doesn't contaminate our bodies. We all want these things collectively. We want an economy based here in Vargas, strongly supported by the college, which is vibrant, where people can work and expect for an honest day's work on honest day's pay. Yeah. These are not black and white issues. These are red, white, and blue issues. Yeah. Yeah. So when I hear people telling me that the NAACP is just about black and white, I tell them, no, we're about red, white, and blue. We're about making real and finishing the work. It is up to every successive generation to take America as we find it and to put our shoulders to the plow and make this a more perfect union yeah. to secure for our children and our posterity the full blessings of liberty. Yeah. This is our American birthright. So I've come to Valdosta to remind Valdosta uh -huh. that you have more in common than you have in differences. Yeah. To remind The matter that has grabbed the national attention. Mm -hmm. You should press for justice, not just for Kendrick Johnson's family, yeah. but for the Valdosta Lowndes County community. Yeah. You should continue to press for justice because it is the American thing to do. Yeah. 
You should continue to press for justice because if it's worth sending our boys around the globe to stand on foreign soil to fight for every promise of our democracy, then it's worth fighting for right here in Baldassa. Amen. Tonight, I want to remind this community this is not as a diverse crowd as I had hoped would be here. Uh -huh. But I want to remind Vadasta to harvest the spirit of the NAACP. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I want to talk with you about embracing your role as game changers. Uh -huh. you, 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 you have an obligation. You have an opportunity. You have a moment that you can embrace your role as a game changer. Or you can be written off like Birmingham, or Money, Mississippi, or Memphis, Tennessee, or any of the other places that have been confronted with violence, mm -hmm. that have been confronted with uh, uh, a lack of uh, full and, and impartial investigation. You have an opportunity here, and I hope that in Valdosta, you all will marshal your resources and take that. There are moments in time that provide opportunities for game for the game to change. Can, can, I, can, I, can I tell you about some of those when Ferdinand Magellan sailed the ocean, he left with a, a, a mindset that it held firm uh, for centuries that the world was flat. When he got to a place that we would later name the, the Magellan Strait, he sailed on through there. Of course, it wasn't a happy ending for Ferdinand, but for those on his vessel, they would keep on sailing, uh, and they would keep going and keep going until they came back to the place for which they had departed. They changed the game. Yeah. When you change the game, you have to come up with new ways of talking about what has just taken place. Lexicographers lex had to come up with new words. They had to invent a word like globe and invent a word like circumnavigate and invent words like equator and invent all kinds of new words because one person believed that just because people believed something didn't make it true. That's right. And just because people who had what we call back at home education believed it to be true didn't make it true. No. And just because people who had shiny badges on believed no. it didn't make it true. No. That you have to press for truth until truth stands up by itself. Yes. Shouts to the whole universe. Yes. This is what I've always been. Yes. Despite what petty men have said of me. Mm -hmm. It was always true. Regardless of how sincerely held the belief was that the world was flat, it was not flat, and the uh, the sun did not revolve around the earth, the earth revolved around the sun. You're going to have to be so historical, I want you to hear me tonight, so I want you to relax a little bit. Game changes happen all around us. I hear the young man came to me and said, who's better, uh, Kobe or LeBron? I said, let me tell you something. Neither Kobe or LeBron are uh, in the league of what I'm talking about. I'm talking about game changes. In 1992, I was sitting. I was sitting on 1996. I was sitting there on the edge of my seat, and and and, and, and it, it was it was a it was a moment that I was looking forward to. Uh, the Jazz were determined to not let Michael Jordan uh, get his three feet. You all remember that, don't you? And, and, and he was sick, and there was injuries on the team, and it seemed like everything was working against him. We had never even heard of a two repeat, a two three feet. I don't even know. And he, Now experience. They're going to be tit for tat 
The scores are going to bounce back and forth. But what you have to do is continue to press for the goal regardless. Folks are going to get injured along the way. Things are going to set you back. But keep pressing for the mark. I wish I was talking to you. Not just in education and education. 
economic sustainability, but in, but in criminal justice. As long as the basic man, I, I want to, can I, can I share a point with you tonight? I'm going yeah, to sit down. I want to yeah. make sure we have space for questions and answers, give you updates on uh, the Kendrick Johnson case and more money that you may have heard about. I want to discuss three things. Listen, 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 listen. We, we've been dealing with this for so long. My mother said that freedom is a constant struggle. We've been struggling for so long that we should be free, but we're not. And I think we're not free because we fundamentally don't understand American racism. We, we fundamentally don't understand American racism. When, and, and I want you to engage three points with me. These, I'm, I'm arguing with you. You don't have to necessarily believe me. I want to challenge your thinking tonight. First of all, I want to, you to know that if you're going to overcome American racism, you got to overcome the fiction of race itself. Right, right. I, I, I didn't think I was going to get into it. Let me tell you something. This is, this is a lie from the pits of hell that has been promoted over the last uh, two or three hundred uh, years that, that, that there are differences between people that are biological that we call race. If you talk to anybody of any letters or learning, they will tell you that there is more differences between the color of a cat's eyes than there are biological differences people, that all human beings belong to the same species, right. that we have the same biological uh, uh, origin, right. and that we are all born, right. see this is how American racism is based, it's based on this basic lie that we are different, that we are different, we are different biologically, we are different from our origin, and if we are different then that would account for the differences in our achievements, but if you dispel that lie that we are different biologically, then you come to the conclusion that we are all born with the same inherent dignities mm -hmm. and rights as human beings. Yeah. That we all possess equal faculties for obtaining the highest levels of intellectual and technical and social and economic and cultural and political development. Yeah. Yeah. And that any differences between people, yeah. and there are real differences between white and black people, uh -huh. but they are not biological. They are completely attributable to geographical, yeah. geographical, yeah. social, yeah. economic, yeah. political constructs laid down upon them. That's uh, right. So as long as you continue to see yourself as a white race and a black race, right. you will overcome American yeah. racism. As long as you think you can come and talk to the black community, yeah. you won't overcome racism. As long as you continue to doubt everybody because of the color of their skin, you will overcome American racism. Right. Race is a fiction. It was a fiction designed and promoted during colonialism because the only way that you can rape a people of every resource they have, including their life, their liberty, their own pursuit of their happiness, is that you have to dehumanize them. Amen. <laughs> Strip away the Johnson case. Uh -huh. I got three sons, uh -huh. and I clearly understand that this could have happened in any American city. Yes. Not just a southern American city, but any American city. Mm -hmm. But when I strip it down, take race away from it, everybody wants to believe that if something happened to their child, that it would be properly and fully investigated. Amen. There would not be a rock left unturned. Right. There would not be a question left unanswered. Right. And at the end of the day, the community would rally around those bereaved families and let them know we are one with you. That's right. The reason why I know that is because I lost my son, the late Frederick Douglass Hale. He died of, of reasons that there is no medical explanation for. He died suddenly. Six months of perfect bill of health. My wife left the doctor's office, went across the street to get a salad to eat, put him down, and he turned blue and he died. Mm -hmm. As a civil litigator, my gut told me that something wasn't right. It's a lawyer. Mm -hmm. My mind said that somebody messed up. Mm -hmm. the, the, the parent in me did not want to accept that sometimes things happen and beyond our explanation. Mm -hmm. One thing I was confident about. I was confident in what happened after that. Yeah. 
and I was confident that the community that I have adopted wrapped their arms around me and fully embraced me and loved me. And the love that I received was not a black love, it was not a white love. It was the love that every community should have for parents in Greece.